with Berm, our sole contention is that a carbon tax would make America green again. As Alex Kerr of UC Davis explains, a carbon tax would create a price signal for private markets to reduce carbon dioxide emissions and invest in the development of fossil fuel alternatives like solar and wind energy. He furthers that these technologies would be uniquely attractive to businesses after a carbon tax because of their low production costs and stable prices, concluding that the tax would not only create a larger framework for creating and distributing clean tech, but would also invite businesses to invest in alternative energy with the guarantee of making a profit. Indeed, Sigmund Schmidt of the European Commission quantifies that a one percentage point increase in an energy tax's total share of user costs increases cl clean energy patents by as much as 2.4%. Consequ consequently, Scott Nystrom of Synapse Energy Economics furthers that a carbon tax would result in significant turnover and replacement of many of today's traditional power plant plants with alternative energy plants in the next 25 years. In fact, Nystrom finds that a carbon tax would increase wind and solar power's total share of U.S. power generation from 5 to 37 percent, a 640 percent increase. This shift has three key impacts. First, boosting the economy. The Union of Concerned Scientists finds that because it is far less mechanized and requires more human labor, producing just 25 percent of U.S. energy output through alternative energy would create triple the amount of jobs as producing an equivalent amount of energy through fossil fuels. Robert Pollan of the Center for American Progress uh, continues that just $150 million in new clean energy investment would create 2.5 million new jobs, enough to reduce the U.S. unemployment rate by a full percentage point. These job gains are essential because, as Aaron Shore of McGill University finds, unemployment by making access to basic needs far more elusive increases one's risk of death by 63%. Second, reducing U.S. foreign oil dependence. As Gregory Miller of the University of Oklahoma observes, the development of new technologies associated with a drastic drop in U.S. oil demand. Marshall Saunders of the Citizens Climate Lobby furthers that as alternative energy becomes competitive with fossil fuels, the United States will import less foreign oil, making America less dependent on nations and regimes that don't have our best interests at heart. This is crucial because, as Vicente Bove of the University of Warwick finds, a one-unit decrease in oil dependence decreases a nation's arms exports by 26%. The reason, as Bove furthers, is that oil-dependent nations like the United States are motivated to send weapons abroad by the potential for conflict to disrupt the supply of oil or an increase in oil price. By limiting this dependence, our carbon tax would also limit the motivation for the United States to send military aid abroad. This is supremely important because military aid furthers terrorism. Naveen Papad of UNC explains that nations receiving U.S. military aid are encouraged to further the prevalence of terrorist groups to keep the aid flowing. Consequently, he finds that providing U.S. military aid to a nation lengthens terrorist group survival by 67%. Third, reducing air pollution. As the WHO reports, air pollution is the single biggest environmental health factor in the world. The reason, as Michelle Castillo of CBS News explains, is that exposure to air pollution for a prolonged period of time can raise the risk of health effects like lung disease and heart failure. Alarmingly, Bernie Roberts of the Earth Policy Institute reports that in the United States, air pollution claims 70,000 lives per year. A burden James Boyce of the University of Massachusetts explains disproportionately affects the poor who are often forced to live in the shadow of dangerous factory fumes. Fortunately, as the Union of Concerned Scientists explains, shifting from fossil fuels to renewable energy limits coal and natural gas emissions, which are directly linked to harmful air pollution. Consequently, Ian Perry of the IMF concludes that a carbon tax would result in a 23% reduction in CO2 emissions and a 55% reduction in U.S. deaths from air pollution. Because we need a carbon tax to make America green again, Nick and I are very proud to affirm. Can you evidence? Yep. Arvin? Yes. We debate the resolution, Observation 1, repealing the tax. The Brookings Institute explains that climate change requires long-term decisions but is vulnerable to short-term political pressures. They further quote, there's always going to be a constituency to repeal the carbon tax, and it will get louder as the tax and retail energy prices go up. On this matter, the Heartland Institute furthers an almost immediate repeal of exactly what happened in Australia. Moreover, this is uniquely a problem with the carbon tax. As the Heartland Institute notes, from a political perspective, it would be much easier to repeal a carbon tax than an environmental regulation. That in mind, contention one, economic harms. The Congressional Budget Office explains that as producers are charged by the government, a carbon tax would raise the price of fossil fuels, increase the price of emissions producing goods and services, decrease real wages, lower the labor supply, and reduce investment. These economic distortions have significant effects on our economy. As Dr. Dietari estimates, a carbon tax would cost over 1 million jobs, reduce personal income by $7,000, and an aggregate loss of $2.5 trillion in GDP by 2030. 
Even when considering a revenue-neutral tax where the tax revenue is returned to the people, the Center for Climate Policy reports that regardless of how the revenue is returned, net GDP will be reduced. Put simply, the CCP calculates the economic cost of carbon, with the best-case scenario costing $42 of GDP to reduce just one ton of CO2. On a microeconomic level, the CBO finds that poorer Americans who spend a larger proportion of their income on energy and transportation will see costs proportional to their income twice as high. Contention to environmental harm. Subpoint A, carbon leakage. The Financial Post states that it would be illegal under World Trade Organization rules to impose a tariff on imports if the purpose was to offset lax environmental policies, such as if China refused to regulate its carbon emissions. This is problematic because, as the Wall Street Journal explains, quote, any unilateral effort by the U.S. to restrain carbon emissions will simply result in shifting carbon-intensive activities to other countries. The Harvard Environmental Law Review explains that such carbon leakage entirely outweighed emissions reduction from the Kyoto Protocol. They further quote, when the regulating country loses an emitting industry and its economic benefits to another country, it still experiences the same environmental harm. Even worse than just a neutral effect on carbon, a carbon tax further accelerates climate change in two unique ways. Firstly, the Wall Street Journal explains, quote, given the carbon intensive nature of transporting goods back to the United States, such efforts might increase carbon emissions worldwide. The National Resources Defense Council quantifies this, finding that when goods are imported by air from other countries as opposed to a local source, the pollution emitted is 500 times higher. Secondly, Harvard finds that in regulated countries where industries have left, voters will be less likely to support other greenhouse gas controls because environmental policy is now associated with economic loss. And in unregulated countries where the industries move, policy will be dominated by the special interests of these polluting firms. These ideas are proven by the European Commission, which models that in the case of the unilateral Swedish carbon tax, while Swedish CO2 emissions may decrease, overall emissions in the EU increased as a result. Ultimately, Harvard concludes, quote, Unilateral regulation is worse than nothing. Subpoint B, natural gas. According to the Energy Information Agency, 27% of the United States energy comes from natural gas. However, the New York Times explains that a carbon tax would cause a shift, energy shift towards natural gas. In fact, the University of Arizona has found that a carbon tax would increase natural gas profitability when compared to coal by 33%. However, according to the EPA, natural gas release is 3.8 times more methane than coal. There are two impacts of this. The first is climate change. Methane is 85 times more potent in carbon heat than CO2, and the National Energy and Technology Laboratory finds that natural gas has a 30% higher global warming potential than any other fossil fuel. This is impacted by the International Panel on Climate Change that finds that unless methane is reduced, Earth's average surface temperature will increase by 2 degrees by 2050, regardless of carbon dioxide emissions increasing or decreasing. Secondly is pollution. According to the West of Princeton University, a simple 20% change in methane emissions is associated with 30,000 annual and premature deaths, so a carbon tax would increase methane emissions, killing more people. Thus, we negate. So in your first observation, you tell us then how like short-term pressures are going to lead to countries basically the United States. So roll back, like reduce, like getting rid of the carbon tax essentially, correct? Uh, yes. Yeah. So in the 40 other countries besides Australia, did we see this happen? I mean, like we, I mean, it happened in Australia, right? And right, I know, but I'm talking about the other 40 countries. I mean, no, and here's why. Like, I would argue that in the wake of Citizens United, like. Um, companies and corporations right. play a bigger role in politics than other countries. So okay. we can't look to countries in the United, in the European Union, wow. which is intrinsically different from the United wait, States. Wait, but money still plays a part in like we politics in those other countries. In too. the United States, this problem would be worse. And we tell you that it's easier to repeal a carbon tax compared to an environmental regulation. Why would, okay, okay. Next, can I ask you a question? Yeah, sure. Okay, so the reason why there's going to be a decrease in oil demand is because prices are going to increase, right? Yes. Okay. So why is that going to decrease our reliance on foreign oil if the price of foreign oil isn't going to decrease? Wait, what? Foreign oil? Is yeah. You said specifically in your right, second right. point, yeah, yeah, yeah. or third, second point, yes, that it's going to decrease okay. our dependence on so foreign this, oil. This gets back why? to the idea of like whether or not you can tax imports, basically like that, or oh, okay. use in like a place that has a carbon tax, right? Oh, okay. So you're saying that like the reason why we're going to have less importation is because of the tariff. No, the warrant for why there's less foreign oil dependence is because the United States switches to like alternative energy. Well, right, but like that, the reason why that switch occurs is because of the increased price of oil. Yes. We're not taxing oil in other countries, right? right. We're only we taxing it here the in the United States. We could We're going to implement the tariff, yes. but it's illegal under World Trade Organizations. Yes, under free trade agreements, it's illegal. 
Yes, so we're not going to do that, and we're no, not going to There are prepare. lots of countries that we import oil from that we don't have a free trade agreement. What's our number one importer? Of, who do we import the most oil from? I mean, we did this in the last round. You said Saudi Arabia. Exactly. I looked it up we, have a free we don't trade. have a free trade agreement. We do have a free trade agreement. <laughs> no, we don't. Like, it's illegal to impose this trade tariff based on environmental policies. We can't punish China because of what they're doing to the environment. You can. That's, like, no, that's you the purpose can. of a carbon like, tax. We went through the industrial revolution. Like, they're going through it now. Like, it just doesn't work. All right, do you have a question? Okay, yes. Let's talk about like how we're going to be shifting to alternative fuel. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, is that the only thing we're going to be shifting to? I mean, I'm assuming that you're talking about your... Right, we're talking about natural gas, natural, right? Yeah. So can we agree that we're going to be shifting away from coal and towards natural gas? We're shifting away from coal, sure. And no, we're going to natural gas, right? Uh, I don't know. You're not really providing me how much natural gas, like the amount of natural gas that the United States Okay, uses. how much more profitable is alternative energy? It might be more profitable. We tell you that after you pass a carbon tax, alternative energy becomes more profitable than fossil fuels. Really? How yes. much more profitable is it going to be? I can't give you a percentage, but Kerr tells you but that it becomes more profitable and invites business to invest. Really? Yes. How much, like, what is this carbon tax? Because that seems like ridiculous to say that alternative energy is going to be more profitable than natural gas. I mean, obviously we're going to disagree. Let's start with an overview on their case. First, Dana Nicotelli of The Guardian writes that in the U.S., the simplest and most practically and politically feasible form of carbon tax would be a fee and dividend carbon tax, or where all tax returns would be paid back to citizens in the form of a monthly or yearly cash transfer. This is distinct from revenue neutral, because with revenue neutral, because the poor don't pay income taxes, there's no impact on them, unless you have fee and dividend, and then you send the taxes back. But second, Joshua Meltzer of Johns Hopkins explains that increasing U.S. demand for green tech also creates a strong global incentive for development of green tech in other countries who want to compete, meaning every impact of our case applies internationally. But now let's go to their observation one, where they talk about a repeal. First, as Reeves from Brookings explains, it's politically unpopular to appeal a tax. The people's perceptions is that then you have to institute a new tax to make up for it, meaning this wouldn't actually happen in the U.S. But second, they can only give you the example of Australia for a repeal because every other country with a carbon tax still has their carbon tax, right? This is a very just one example they're cherry picking. The repeal doesn't actually happen. But now let's go to economic harms. First, right off the bat, we can look to the New York Times, who explains that none of the 40 nations and small jurisdictions engaged in a carbon tax are experiencing any economic harms. So that just isn't happening in the real world. Don't let them tell you it's going to happen in the United States. But next, you can turn the argument against them because the unit of concerned scientists explains that the aggregate cost of the harmful health impacts of fossil fuels is estimated to be as high as almost $900 billion, or 6% of GDP, meaning if we reduce fossil fuel air pollution, we link into econ. But next, you can turn the argument against them again because when Scott Nystrom controls for a fee and dividend carbon tax, he finds you're creating 2.1 million jobs, which is turning the economy against them. But now let's go into the contention, too, where they talk about the environment. And they start with this argument about carbon leakage. A lot of problems here. First, Carbon Market Watch reports there has so far been no compelling evidence that the EU's climate policies are forcing companies to move abroad, which the literature indicates will not change, so this just simply isn't happening. But second, Carbon Market Watch further said the number of countries and regions where companies could relocate to avoid climate policies is decreasing as global efforts to address climate change ramp up. In fact, jurisdictions with carbon pricing, meaning places they can't move, now account for 40% of the global economy, and you're not seeing any linkage to leakage in the slightest. But third, there's just no impact here, because the, inter the International Energy Agency explains that the idea that a carbon cap in one country would cause a net increase in global emissions is contradicted by all quantitative studies. That's crucial because they can cherry pick all the crazy studies they want, saying that you would see an increase uh, like internationally, but we're telling you that a vast majority of the studies find you do not see an increase. But then, recognize they don't ever control for specifically a U.S. carbon tax here, and they read general arguments about carbon pricing. The reason that's problematic is because Joshua Elliott of the University of Munich explains that when you look specifically to a U.S. carbon tax, it finds that total leakage would be 9% max, which isn't even close to a net increase in global emissions, prefer the evidence that's specific to carbon taxes. But now let's get into their impacts. Now first they talk about an increase in imports from abroad. This just doesn't make any sense. Defer to our second warrant where we tell you that if we're like decreasing our dependence on oil, we're going to start to produce more like locally, which means we're not importing more from abroad, which means you don't link it to any of the harms of like flying the oil over, which is what this contention is about. But second, recognize electricity, what's mostly affected, is never imported in any way that doesn't make sense, so there's no offense off the first impact. But now let's go to natural gas. First, right off the bat, we can look to Adam Grant of Stanford who finds empirically that even if you assume that all U.S. methane emissions are coming from natural gas, natural gas still isn't a bigger greenhouse gas contributor than coal. But second, you can turn the argument against them because Grant furthers that switching from coal to natural gas for, for any energy production still empirically reduces the total greenhouse effect. That's going to be crucial because if you look in the long term, even if you buy that methane is created, the problem with this argument is that in the long term, you are still seeing that fossil fuels are going to be more harmful. 
Now then, you can turn the argument against them again. Because what Richard Pierce of George Washington University finds is that a national switch from coal to natural gas would reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 50% overall, turns the argument straight against them. But second, and most importantly, what Pierce furthers is that the switch from natural gas would stop tens of thousands of premature deaths and hundreds of thousands of illnesses in the U.S. each year because you decrease the inhalation of pollutants emitted by coal plants. This is crucial. Methane does not have the particulate matter that gives people diseases from emissions, but coal does. That's going to be crucial because, additionally, because we're giving you the direct link from a switch. They tell you later methane kills people. We'll tell you directly natural gas saves lives. It's a cleaner link, which means that's where you're going to be voting affirmative. Thank you. In our contention to some point A about carbon leakage, the first thing you extend is the second impact of the political. A cold drop that tells you political impacts happen after a carbon tax. Once you see the economy suffer in the countries the carbon tax, as well as in the developing countries where there's more lobbying. This is huge. I'm extending it my rebuttal because it's a big deal. This supersedes any of their impacts if you see the carbon tax then get repealed and less environmental regulation in the long run. The next big deal thing I'm extending right now in rebuttal comes from the subpoint B of contention 2 of natural gas when he cold drops the pollution impact from Dr. West of Princeton that tells you 30,000 people die each year from inhaling methane, only a 20% change in methane. This is huge because A, we're increasing more than 20%, and B, none of their studies account for when you look to methane actually changing ozone partic particles, and that's where he gets the 30,000 deaths. He totally ignored that, and that's huge. But now let's go to their case. As an overview, Sean, I would argue that U.S. judges need to weigh more higher probability impacts than anything speculative. Their entire case is predicated on this jump to alternative energy, and I would argue any tax cause of deadweight loss, that's Econ 101, and don't buy their speculative arguments when you have actual economic impacts happening. Happening, how can you sell that to the American people? But secondly, and more importantly, this entire argument is hinged on a shift to alternative energy. That's their sole contention. But there's a big problem here. This causes, comes from the NCPA that tells you that carbon tax only changes the price of coal by two cents. This is huge in today's round because it's not enough to shift toward alternative energy. What they don't tell you is also from the NCPA that tells you right now solar energy costs so much money, it's two times more than that of natural gas. So when coal prices increase by two cents, it's not not enough to shift toward alternate energy, but it sure shifts toward natural gas. And that's the University of Arizona cold drop by my opponents in rebuttal that I also extend from contention to subpoint B that tells you comparatively, the only comparative card after a carbon tax tells you coal to natural gas. Natural gas becomes 33 times more profitable, and that's huge in today's round because it takes up their entire argument because we're not shifting to alternative energy. But now let's go specifically on their Nystrom evidence where they try to explain a shift to alternative energy. They also cross-apply this in response to our contention one, so here are the index. First, this is funded by a climate ta or carbon tax lobbying corporation, so take it with a grain of salt. But secondly, where they're reading from the resource assumption on page 51 is specifically assumptions. They tell you Nystrom assumes that solar energy will decrease by 50% in the next four years. That's ridiculous because solar energy costs twice as much as natural gas right now. Nothing's happening in four years. Nystrom also in this section also um, assumes that geothermal energy will just start working very well, as well as biothermal and other types of alternative energy. They're reading from an assumption section, don't buy it. That's why you prefer our evidence that's specific to a carbon tax and a shift toward natural gas. We're not shifting toward alternative energy. But now specific on the impact starting with the boost of econ. Yet alone, we outweigh this with our real high probability impacts coming when you cause deadweight loss. Doesn't matter how they try to give that money back, you see an actual harm to the American people that's jobs. But secondly, on oil, first, logically, if there's less US oil production, what they argue, then that means oil prices in the US increase. That means we're importing more from foreign oil companies. That turns their argument because if prices increase in the US, we're importing more overseas. Even more importantly, out of the top five oil producers, Canada, Mexico, and Venezuela are there. Not much terrorism in Canada last time I checked, so there's no impact here. But now finally on air pollution, couple problems. First, the shift to natural gas, remember, kills 30,000 more people. The Clean Air Task Force tells you that carbon dioxide doesn't actually kill people. They're talking about other things like sulfur dioxide and nitrous oxide. That's why we tell you, just regulate those things directly. Their evidence of the 55% reduction is not a carbon tax, but rather a coal tax. Just regulate with the coal tax and not hurt all other energy sources. But finally, the Blatnik School tells you because of the green paradox, coal producers, after you pass a carbon tax, will be incentivized to produce more in the short term, leading to 50% more coal, coal turning the argument. At the end of the day, for the overseas impacts, as well as the impacts here at home, we are very proud to make it. Okay. We're going to take some time. So, how does natural <coughs> gas emit methane? Okay, it emits methane through leakages. Through leakages, like in the plants that produce it, right? Um, through the fracking process, as well as a few other types of methane. 
Part yeah. of the refining yes. process. Yes. Yeah. Sure. So when you talk about the terminal impact of your contention to, I'm sorry, your third impact, the air pollution, yeah. right? This, that's the 70,000 lives, right? Um, well, that's how many people die now. The terminal impact would be like the 55% okay. drop. So the 70, yes. we'll talk about the 55%. But sure. first, the 70,000 lives, does that have anything to do with CO2? It says U.S. air pollution kills 70,000 okay. people. Does breathing in CO2 kill? Yes. Wait. No. Okay. So here's the daily caller, right, 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 the things right, right. that like I, I blow over you and then so right. I, I understand. <laughs> right. Yeah. So the issue is that when you emit CO2, <coughs> what happens is every factory, every coal plant, when cool. they emit CO2, they're emitted with other particulate matter. Sulfur dioxide and nitrous oxide, oxide, right? That's a few of them. That's not most of them, I think. But it's like CFC is a couple of those, but those are the main ones from the daily caller. But that's only the coal, right? Wait. What do you mean? Sulfur dioxide and nitrous oxide and those other things that kill the seventy thousand people only are emitted from coal. I mean, our evidence from Pierce tells you that switching to natural gas is... Wait, just, hold on. Or, no, sorry, hold different question. Yeah, so okay, you know, let's I talk don't know about those things are unique for coal. Okay, if that's good. Well, according to the Daily Card, they are. So why don't we just tax coal? Your Perry evidence Wait, says a coal uh, okay. tax. No, 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 no. Here's what you're missing, right? What the Perry evidence says is it looks at doing a coal tax and a gas tax and an oil tax all okay, together in one. But look, it's, I understand it's a bar graph, and the biggest part of the bar was from the coal tax. Yeah, so <laughs> why extra the parts are what get you like the judges call for the impact. evidence. It's like this much and then this much. Okay, <laughs> tax, carbon tax. Yeah, but like logically okay. think about it. If a coal tax does this much and a carbon tax adds everything else, you get yeah. a bigger lives in No, it. why don't we just tax coal rather than screw Because that's a natural gas, gas, right? That's not relevant else. in the round. What's relevant why in the round tax is what a carbon tax oxide directly. Wait, no, because you you can't like reach nitrous oxide okay. directly. So you'll reach it through real quick. Oh, yeah, 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 question is even on you. Okay. So let's talk about the economy, right? So why has no other carbon tax country seen economic harms? What do you mean by oh so the New York Times evidence? Yeah, well that's the question. So we asked for the New York Times evidence in last round and it didn't okay. say no economic harms. It says so, like, the fears of that economic harms are unfounded in other okay, countries. It's the New York Times. Time. It's not an actual quantitative analysis. Wait, British okay, wait, let's, British let's back up finish, for a Can I finish? Sure. Can I finish? British Columbia, you saw economic harms. Australia, you saw economic harms so big sure. that they repealed. Sure. So obviously New York Times doesn't know what they're talking about. I mean, they're giving me two countries, they're looking at every country. Okay, let's yeah, talk sure. about the question. I want to get back to the point of carbon leakage, right? Sure. So you argument about how carbon leakage is not going to happen, yet then you read that there's 9% of leakage. So which is it? No, 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 you're missing the point. The, th the part that's contradicted by all quantitative studies is the fact that you would emit on net more. It's not okay. that any would be leakage. Except the quantitative study from the European Commission tells you the Swedish carbon tax increased on net European emissions. Okay, so you can give me, again, this comes back to the like idea of like, a one carbon tax doesn't outweigh you holistic use? evidence. The okay. evidence that we give you about the U.S. for Hold Meltzer tells you the U.S. carbon tax I promise the New York Times didn't did analyze all 41 no, 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 now I'm talking about an actual study. That You're now I'm talking about question. an actual study from Meltzer. First voting issue is their second contention about the environment. Starting their subpoint A about leakage. Remember, the IEA tells you that no quantitative studies say that there is any increase in emissions after you pass a carbon tax because of leakage. The evidence is just not supporting their position. But secondly, on this idea of natural gas, remember that they can see that methane is only emitted when uh, natural gas is being extracted. At that point, methane isn't the cause. Is uh, sorry, natural gas isn't the cause of these thirty thousand deaths that they're uh, reading about. Coal kills a lot more people, so the switch to coal, switch away from coal is going to be a lot better. But secondly, Pierce tells you that an entire switch in the United States from coal to natural gas would decrease rec gas, greenhouse gas emissions by 50%, not carbon, but greenhouse gas. But secondly, Pierce tells you that a switch from coal to natural gas would also save tens of thousands of lives in the long term because natural gas isn't nearly as bad as, as coal. It's not methane, it's natural gas, it's different. But that go to the second voting issue, which is this idea of making America green again. They tell you a carbon tax only changes the price of coal by two cents. The Sch Schmidt from the European Commission tells you that there's a one-to-one one one ratio between an increase in price of, of energy and a decrease in consumption, or decrease in consumption when you pass a carbon tax. But secondly, they tell you solar power, solar energy is two times as expensive as coal. Kerr in our case tells you that renewables would attract businesses after a carbon tax because of their low production costs and, inv and invite investments with a guarantee of making a profit. At that point, it becomes cheaper than natural gas, and it, uh, you switch to, to alternatives rather than natural gas. But secondly, Schmidt tells you a 1% <coughs> increase in a taxes share of energy costs increases clean energy patents by 2.4 percent. Natural gas, uh, clean energy is only going up. Then they tell now with that go to our third warrant about reducing air pollution. They tell you CO2 doesn't kill people. But remember that when you decrease carbon, you're decreasing the amount of uh, other pollutants that are emitted a long time carbon. And then with this idea of a green paradox, remember that Robert Klein from McGill University finds that oil, coal, and natural gas are constrained by physical and capital fa factors that can't just be escalated at any time. With that, you extend the impact. Comes from Perry, who tells you that a carbon tax leads to a 23% reduction in CO2 emissions and a 55% reduction in U.S. deaths from air pollution.
my judges? First reason why you can vote for the Conti is because of our creation one. My opponents come up here and try to tell you that it's going to be politically unpopular to repeal the tax, but extend the fact that the Heartland Institute and the Brookings Institute, which specifically tells you that it's going to become more and more popular to repeal the tax when we see all these negative harms. So we're not going to see all my opponents' long-term benefits because it's going to get repealed in the short term. Right there, you can vote for us right there. Now let's move on to economic impacts. We specifically tell you in case that there's a $2.5 trillion GDP loss, $1 million job loss, and a $7,000 loss in income for every single a person. Now, my opponents come up here and try to tell you that this is, it's going to cause 2.1 million jobs, but remember, Arvin comes up here and tells you that that's biased, and he assumes crazy resource assumptions, like projects are like somehow going to succeed, and how solar prices are going to decrease by 50%. So extend the Center for Climate Apology that specifically looks to all revenue taxes and finds that in the best case scenario, we'll lose $42 in GDP for every ton of CO2 cost, and that how the CBO finds that the poor people will see two times the increase in cost. Right there, we show you that there's an economic cost, and it's got to be repealed. Now, let's look to the specific environmental harms that we talk about in the contention due, specifically about our carbon leakage. There are two important points about this. Firstly, we tell you that as a result of a carbon tax, it's going to result in more carbon leakage, companies moving. And secondly, we tell you that it's going to lead to more importation. This empirically has occurred in Sweden, where we saw, even though a decrease in CO2, an increase in CO2 in other countries in Europe. And my opponents come up here and try to tell you that this has never happened. We clearly show that it has happened in other countries, and even extend their university meeting card, which says 9% is going to become a carbon leakage. So my opponents don't have access to any of their impacts when they tell you we're going to be shifting to alternative fuels, because we're just going to see an importation of more oil, because we specifically tell you that it's illegal to impose a tariff on other countries based on environmental standards. So right there, we're going to see a 500% increase in emissions. Now let's talk about the biggest impact of today's time, which is going to be in natural gas. We specifically tell you that this is bad because a shift to natural gas kills 30,000 people for just a 20% increase. And also we tell you that natural gas, with all things taken into consideration, has a 30% higher global warming potential compared to coal. My opponent says there's 70,000 lives, but this has nothing to do with CO2, and this is only about coal. We tell you that this is non-unique, and for all these reasons, we are just strong con about thank you attention about is sorry is about like the idea that when the United States passes a carbon tax there would be leakage rates of about nine percent on average right well that's right well, I mean we just like took your call. yeah right right so we'll play with the nine percent you, you okay. understand what like the nine percent means right like the nine percent Right. Yeah, that means so when you, reduce, when you reduce emissions in the United States, that means that only 9% of what was yeah. reduced is going so, abroad. So you still see net. So doesn't that mean no. there's a net decrease no, in emissions? No, no, no. So no, that no. links into our impact that I started at the top of my rebuttal, which is the Harvard evidence of political impact. That if you hmm. see leakages to other countries, those Wait. countries will now have lobbyists, no matter what the Harvard evidence. That's the Harvard evidence for the economic harm. No, what? that's a political uh, no. So that's, that's a political harm? Harvard's are the guys who said that sure, sure. unilateral carbon tax is worse than literally doing nothing for the environment. Okay, and that's untouched by you guys. Okay, no, why? So the political war is even if you have 9% leakages, in the countries that have a carbon tax, sure. econ is the prerequisite. Because if you have economic harms, the public associates in the countries with carbon tax, carbon tax, environmental sure. policy, so the economic harms. Still so, you, so, you, hold on. so you repeal it, and then you cause it. Okay, okay. But like then your answer the just now, the political, okay, now then we get the political. In sure. foreign countries where you have some leakages, even at 9%, yeah. Harvard tells you now you have big oil in China, in India, and they lobby for Wait. less environmental mm -hmm. regulation. This is all oh, untouched right. by There's that. no way to weigh this is the issue, right? Like, really? no, yes, nine percent. You can't just take our evidence and say 9% is enough, right? You don't have evidence that says okay, that. Harvard tells you mean unilateral tax is worse than doing yeah. nothing. I mean, that's Full just rhetoric right from a professor. If we're giving you a study right. saying it's only 9%, you can't just take okay. that and say that's that nine percent of our impact. There's still a political harm. But nine percent of your impact. That's so, okay, but there's two points of this, right? Like, there's sure. one where the companies actually leave, and two where there's an increase in importation. Yep. We tell you that there's going to be an increase in importation, okay. specifically for fuel and oil no, 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 and no, no, other okay. industries. We'd say, we'd say that's a very the tiny. Is illegal. We'd say that's a tiny increase in importation at the point where carbon tax is mostly affecting electricity. Well, but importing is 500 times worse. So the judge can easily wait. Okay, okay. No, no. here's the 500, 500 times worse for what? To send goods overseas. No, 500. Like, what is 500 times worse about? That like okay, so in instead of like driving or going no, to no, the store like, and buying something, you, you have to fly. I'm just asking the country. 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 country, not the one. Like the five hundred oh, emissions. Let's see emissions. Okay, so what type of emissions? CO2 like emissions. all kinds of emissions? Sure, okay. You can ask okay. Now, on the idea of natural gas versus coal, right? Yeah. So we can agree that from the resolution there's a shift from coal to natural gas, right? But then we're just debating what's worse, coal or natural gas. 
No, I, I'd say that we still, like, we're saying like this, even if you, if you shift to natural gas, good for us, but it's okay. more likely so that talk, you're seeing a sure. shift to so alternative energy. So let's talk about the peers, right? Peers has tens of thousands of these things. Yes. Does he account for methane influencing particulate matter, yes. which is the evidence we get? Yes, sir. I mean, this is a guy that okay. studies natural gas all day. Okay, how many, people, how many people die from coal each year? Uh, I don't know. 7,500. Okay. People, a 20% change in methane is 30,000. I mean, so how does that happen? Yeah, really yeah, like, you don't know. You can't just two different instances. We had to do the study. First, starting this idea of rollback. First, remember, they never respond to the fact that this has literally never happened in any other country. That's really problematic because they say they need econ to link into this prerequisite. They still don't respond to the New York Times, telling you that in every single country we had a carbon tax, we didn't see these harms. Sure, they can give you two examples, but if the New York Times tells you overall we're not seeing harms, clearly that's a reason to vote for us. And second, they drop the Union of Concerned Scientists that we review in rebuttal. This is crucial. It says 6% of our GDP is made up of fossil fuel harms. At that point, if we're reducing fossil fuels uniquely, we link into econ and you're not seeing rollback. But now, let's go down to carbon leakage. Remember, they never respond to the IEA saying no quantitative study believes that you see an increase in net global emissions. They just say 9% is enough to link you to this increase in imports, right? But they can't just take our evidence and say that, right? They have to have evidence saying 9% is enough. Don't let them link into this increase in imports. Don't let them do that. They are just trying to use our evidence against us. They don't actually have a card for that. But then our natural gas. They do not respond to Sam's distinction in summary, where he tells you that natural gas actually emits very little methane, even if it's bad, it emits very little. That's why you extend Pierce. The natural gas net decreases emissions by 50%, and Pierce saying a natural gas switch from coal saves tens of thousands of lives. We this voter in the round a very clear reason to vote for us. They just try and say methane kills 30,000 people, but call a card. It doesn't say natural gas kills 30,000 people, it says methane. The reason that's a problem is very little methane is emitted from natural gas. Prefer the clean link where we say that natural gas saves tens of thousands, that's the first voter in the round. Now let's go back to making America green great. Cleanly extend per that after a carbon tax, you see a promise of making a profit by switching to alternative energy, that just goes unresponded to. Then go down to the impact on air pollution. They have yet to respond to Perry, telling you that a U.S. carbon tax decreases emissions by 23% and decreases deaths in the United States by 55%. This is crucial because they never impact out to deaths in their entire case. We're giving you impacts out to death on natural gas, which you should call a lot of cards for, by the way, and also off of air pollution, telling you you decrease U.S. deaths by 55%. That's going to be crucial because lives are going to outweigh any other impact in the round. It's going to be a very clear negative. In my first rebuttal, that tells you that you have to weigh short term high probability impacts over this crazy link story of the long term. But this ties in with our observation one about the tax game of appeal. The evidence we have is specific to the US, as well as this is hinged on economics. They drop economics in their summary and make all these new responses in the final focus. What we tell you is the carbon tax caused a deadweight loss like any tax. That's when the CCP, which looks at fee and dividend too, but tells you in the best case scenario of revenue neutral, there's $42 per ton of harm to GDP, a two $2.5 trillion harm to the economy, that outweighs their unions of concerned scientists, which is a $900 billion impact. So what happens is, if the economy goes in the toilet after you pass a carbon tax, you're going to repeal the tax, repeal other environmental regulation, not only in the U.S., but also overseas. That's why Harvard concludes unilateral carbon tax is worse than doing nothing. All their impacts have to come from the long term. If the carbon tax gets repealed, which is what happens if you vote pro, you see short-term economic impacts and harms and no benefits. But here, they want to talk about lives. These are our impacts, firstly coming from leakage. Show clearly explains to you that there's empirical evidence of Sweden and the European Commission. They studied a Swedish tax and told you on net European Union emissions increase. That's your impaired. Also, they even give you a 9% increase. We just need some access to the impact to tell you transporting is 500 times worse for global warming. As the Harvard evidence tells you additionally, the political impact that they don't even touch. Telling you now even foreign countries will have big oil lobbying for them and there's no environmental regulation and that's why it's worth nothing. But the cleanest way to pull the trigger for con is coal versus natural gas. Remember, the University of Arizona that I read in my, I extended in my rebuttal, tells you natural gas, the comparative to coal, is 30 percent more profitable. That takes up any alternative energy because they're not increasing the price of fossil fuel enough to shift to alternative energy. That means there's two impacts of natural gas. The cleanest one is the actual 30,000 people that die each year from only a 20% change. They try to invite this with a parry, but only 7,500 people die from coal. There's no impact. And the second is the global warming, a 30% increase in global warming comparing coal to natural gas, the only car that does so. And that is what I'm going to do.